Okay guys, we are doing the parking brake shoes on a 2015 Sierra HD. And these are what we're working with. I originally just wanted to adjust them because the e-brake was not working. But when I went to adjust them, as you can see, there is absolutely no pad left. This was the other side I just did. These are the new ones we're going to be doing on the other side. Let's see, that's what a brake pad shoe looks like. So to help you guys out here, a few shortcuts and what I just learned. Um, first, start with a 22 mil. Take your cover off. Take your wheel off. Next, you want to get an 18 mil. You take your caliper bolts off one there one there and pull your shoe off I stick it up in here and then I put a zip tie around there just to make sure it doesn't fall and then uh, let me get that done and we'll be right back okay guys here are the tools that I used to do the other side and this is actually a 21 millimeter not an 18 millimeter sorry the uh, lug nuts are 22 millimeter. So here's a 21 mil ratchet wrench is the easiest to get in right here because if you have a socket, you don't have enough room right there to get it in. So you can use a regular box wrench on that if you don't have one of these fancy ratchet guys, but that's how you get the top one out. And then you can use your uh, impact down on that lower one you got plenty of space over there all right let me get that uh caliper off and uh we'll keep going okay guys we're back i got that caliper off and you want to wrap it around and just kind of rest it up in here take a large zip tie or a bungee cord or some bailing wire secure it so that as you Playing with this, this doesn't accidentally drop and you don't want to break a brake line, have to bleed the whole system and place that. Also be careful of your wheel speed sensor wire, ABS wire that's going over into here when you bring that back down. Try not to get it caught. Um, looks like I got this little copper washer on here. I'll take this guy off real quick and show you, but I just wanted to point out here, last time I did my brakes, I replaced them all last summer, but... I put anti-seize in there behind this thing. So look at how easy, it's already super loose as soon as I take this little retainer off. This will just pull right off, so I don't need to beat on the back of this or mess up anything. If you do need to remove this, and this is all seized on around here, it gets all rusted under there. You wanna get a bolt, um, I think it's like an M12 by something, I'll have to look that up. But you just take the bolt and put it in that hole. Take the other bolt, put it in that hole, take your impact, run those bolts in, you know, make sure you like a two inch, two inch or three inch long bolt. You run those in and that will uh, pull this rotor off of there for you. Um, and then the, the tools I used again, I didn't point that out earlier. I do have a 21 mil for the caliper. This is the 22 for the wheels. We've got some big channel locks, we're gonna need those a little later. Two flat, big flat screwdrivers, some dikes, some good needle nose. And again, that's just to get all the springs in on the shoes under there. So let me get that rotor off and we'll do one more video. Or we'll do a few more videos, but that one's next. Okay guys, so I just pulled the rotor off there. You can see the shoes on this side, which aren't gone. See the metal hardware there and you can see there's a decent amount of pad left on both so unfortunately i'm not going to do this whole video with you guys because i'm going to leave these in because the other side took about two hours maybe an hour and a half but the other side is opposite of this one obviously so you're going to have your uh star wheel here that you can adjust them in your spring start by removing these and you got your pins in here You'll pull um, pull that pin out there, just a little push clip that goes down. Same on that side and side of there, right there. And you'll pull those pins out. Then what was almost impossible on the other side, not impossible because we got it done, but these springs, you got the, it's just like normal uh, 
brake uh, brake shoes on a car you got this one big spring here in the front that you got to get clipped in those little holes but then also if you guys can see it there's one right there right in there on the back side as well and you got to get them both in that little hole and it it's more finesse than anything really to get it right but um you can do it um as i was trying to get it i took all these out i pulled my axle just to see how that would work but then you have another race in there that's screwed on that would actually move your hub off of your axle assembly to give you to get rid of this to get rid of your hub to work inside of there so just pulling this axle isn't really enough you have to be prepared to take out that race inside of there and unscrew that and bring all that out and i just didn't really want to mess with that so i went the more technical route i guess and i was able to get those springs in and out you can't um you do have to reuse them and you know you basically just yank them apart any way you want get some flathead screwdrivers in there i think i pushed on that one there with the flathead and popped it through same with the other side and then uh once those were through i just pulled the front and you can you know jiggle them and then make sure you take those pins out first because then you can walk this whole thing side to side you can pull the whole assembly so you have a little bit more space to use your hand in there to work on it and um it was definitely possible we got it in but on this side all i did um you see the i'll probably put some more um anti-seize on there because my rotor just comes right off without seizing up and then uh, throw a little more anti-seize and I went ahead and already spun this so if you technically didn't want to take your rotor off you get a brake adjustment tool it's kind of like a flathead screwdriver has a weird angle on it and it will come through that back hole which there should be rubber plugs on them mine both kind of disintegrated you take your little screwdriver to here and you'll turn that star wheel until that starts to separate there and when that separates that's how you technically tighten each individual shoe so i had done the other side complete already in this one i just went ahead and adjusted and i put it back on a minute ago and spun it and put the parking brake in there stout again so i got my parking brakes back but um i just didn't want to spend two hours to do this side when you know it's just a parking brake it's holding my truck it's not stopping my truck towing a trailer down a mountain so just holding it in place and as long as you know you still have good quality pad left and it's not metal on metal like the other ones like these old ones here obviously the entire pad came off of there and this one you know a brand new one you can see the thickness of it there versus the thickness of this one it's not terribly different so again, that's why I'm not spending a ton of time on it. You can 100% do this whole thing. Just plan on being very patient. It's kind of a technical process. Those springs in the back, that back big lower spring, that's what I use these for. I bent the, the hooks are super hooky, basically, on the back side. So when you wanna go put the new one on, you can't get that angle to get that through this hole right here. So on the other side, they set up top and there's a spring that goes from here to here on the top side and the bottom side. Well, my problem was, is I couldn't get that spring. It was too hooky. So I used those and I opened my hook just a little bit so that I could get that spring in the back there. And then I was able to, to put this in front of that wedge. Basically on the other side, the the expander is on the top on the other side so I basically brought it into there as able to get that other hook into there you can see so that's the expander and you can see the whole uh, outside spring right there and there's a spring just like it behind it so that's the one I bent out a little and I was able to get those in the holes and once I got in I was able to just shift the assembly to the side I was able to pop in that the one on the front is fairly easy then I went ahead and put the star wheel back in, put the spring over it, make sure if you're just putting new pads and everything, you collapse that in. 
think the other side I ended up doing like two or three full spins out um, even on the brand new shoes to make it um, as tight as I could and then you want to put your pins back through put those clips on throw your rotor back on here a little anti seize in between these areas not too much because you don't want it to seep out and get onto your actual main rotor but anywhere in here along this area where it seizes up is great. Throw your rotor back on, you could spin your wheel, make sure it's not rubbing, and then go ahead and go push your parking brake and all the way, and then come back here and spin your, with your rotor on there and make sure that it's locked up. You can even put your tire back on there and spin it freely. And make sure you have the entire back end of your thing jacked up from the center or However you want to jack it up, both the whole axle needs to be off the ground and your truck needs to be in neutral. And then you need to chalk your front tires. I chalked both of them in the front and back of the tire. And then after that, just reverse the process. Be careful, cut your snap there. Take your caliper, put your rotor on, put your caliper on, and uh, put your tire back on and you're good. Sorry I didn't go through that whole process with you. Like I said, it was very tedious and technical, but 100% possible. These are all of the tools that I used for it. Basically two good flathead screwdrivers, a couple impacts, some good channel locks, and you know, a little cushion for my knees because it's kind of hard on the, on the ground down there. But uh, I hope that helps you guys out a little bit. I did see some videos on here on YouTube, and they were mostly from the kind of 02 to 2012, 2013 series. This is a 2015, but I believe 2014 through 2020 should all be identical on the 250s and 350s, 2500s and 3500s on Chevy and um, GMC trucks. So I hope that helps you guys out because I couldn't find a whole lot of info when I dug into this, but we'll try to make some of these videos for you in the future. Thanks for watching.